So in this video, I'm going to show you how to overclock your NVIDIA GPUs for GPU mining. I will have another video for overclocking AMD GPUs because the process will be different. So I'm going to show you the process I do to get the best efficiency settings for your NVIDIA GPUs. Now every GPU is different even if you have the same make and model when it comes to overclocking. It's silicon lottery and some GPUs may overclock better than others. Now I'm going to show you two ways to overclock your GPUs. First will be a more beginner friendly guide for easier and faster overclocking. Then I'll show you a more advanced guide on locking your voltage when overclocking. And for some GPUs you can actually save up to another 5 watts when locking your voltage. So thanks for tuning in, this is The Life of Mining. So I'm going to test the overclocking mining Ethereum, but ideally the same principles will apply when mining other coins as well. Now Ethereum is more memory intensive, but if a coin is more core intensive, then you want to increase the core clocks more compared to your memory clocks. Now this is my test bench and I'm going to overclock on a GTX 1660 Super, but I'll test all the cards I own, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to overclock your GPUs in Windows. The overclocking tool I'm going to use is called MSI Afterburner. So let's first go ahead and download MSI Afterburner. Now the easiest way to find MSI Afterburner is just to Google search it like so. Once located, click here to download. Once downloaded, go ahead and extract the file and then install MSI Afterburner. Now let's go through the setup process. So once you open the installation file, go ahead and click on yes to start installing MSI Afterburner. Now I'm going to go ahead and select English, but go ahead and select your language from where you're from and click OK. Then go ahead and click on next. And then accept the terms and conditions and click next again. Now one thing you can uncheck and don't need to install is Riva Tuner Statistics Server, but it is fine if you do install it. And then click next. And go ahead and click next again. And then finally install. Let it run the installation. Once it's completed, then hit finish. And there you have it, you just successfully installed MSI Afterburner. You can then delete the MSI Afterburner installation program from your computer. Okay, let's run MSI Afterburner and click on yes when you get a security pop-up. Now the first thing I like to do is change the skin for MSI Afterburner. This is the default skin when opening up MSI Afterburner for the first time. I like to change the skin to the default skin back in 2017 when I first started mining and using MSI Afterburner. So first you want to go to the settings button on the side. Then on top of the menu, scroll over until you see user interface. Then you'll see a drop down under user interface skinning properties. The default skin back in 2017 was called MSI Cyborg Afterburner Skin Red by Drayrex Design. Once selected, go ahead and click on apply and then you should see MSI Afterburner change its skin then click OK. OK, so the first thing I like to do before running a minor program when overclocking my GPUs is change the fan speed so the GPUs do not overheat. In order to change the fan speed, you first have to get it off auto. So click on auto and then you should be able to move the slider to adjust the fan speed manually. Now it's recommended to keep the fan speed between 70% to 100% when mining. But just be aware that increasing your fan speed will wear out the fans quicker and it does raise your power consumption slightly. But it is definitely better to wear out your fans than having your GPUs overheat because you can easily replace the fans. So for now, I'm going to set my fan speed to 80%. Next, I'll drop the power limit to 80%, but I will increase or decrease the power limit to get the best efficiency settings while I'm mining. Typically, GPUs do not need full power in order to get the max hash rates for mining. Then click on the check mark to apply the changes. Okay, so now let's run the miner program. Now, I personally use Phoenix Miner to mine Ethereum, but the same principles will apply on every miner program. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm getting around 26 mega hashes mining Ethereum. The idea is to increase your mega hashes while decreasing your power draw. So since Ethereum is more memory intensive, let's go ahead and adjust the memory clocks first before changing the core clocks. But if I was mining a more core intensive coin, I would adjust the core clocks first, then the memory clocks. So first let's increase the memory to plus 600 and click on the check mark to apply. 
Now, plus 600 on memory is ideally a safe start for mining Ethereum on most GPUs. But if your GPU crashes when it's at plus 600 memory, try starting with plus 400 or plus 200 memory. So now at plus 600 memory, I'm getting around 29 mega hashes mining Ethereum. So next the idea is to keep increasing the memory clocks until the GPU crashes. Now I personally like to start increasing the memory clocks by 50 until it crashes. Now specifically, this GPU will crash at plus 850 memory. Once it crashes, go back to the previous settings before it crashed and increase the memory clocks by 10 or by 5 to fine tune it. So the highest memory clocks I could set for this GPU is plus 820 memory. Now I do want to mention that I have 5 other GTX 1660 supers that are the same make and model and bought at the same time. But some of the 1660 supers I have can only max the memory at plus 800 or plus 780. This is the reason you should fine tune each GPU and not use the same overclock settings for the same GPU even if you have the same exact make and model. So at the power limit at 80% and the memory at plus 820, I was getting around 30 mega hashes mining Ethereum. Now quick side note, I personally don't like to push my GPUs to the limit. So once I find the highest memory clocks and the GPU being stable, I will lower my memory clocks by either 10 or 20 megahertz from the max to get it even more stable. Now when it comes to the core clocks, it depends on the GPU when mining Ethereum. So some GPUs hash rate mining Ethereum will increase or decrease when increasing the core clocks. Some GPUs hash rate will increase or decrease when decreasing the core clocks. Or some GPUs hash rate will remain the same when adjusting the core clocks in any way. But be aware that increasing your core clocks will increase the power consumption and decreasing the core clocks will lower the power consumption. So for the GTX 1660 Super, let's first try increasing the core clocks and see what happens with the hash rates. And to fine tune the core clocks, I'll pretty much do the same steps I did to fine tune the memory clocks. So let's start with plus 100 core and let's check this out. Now it looks like the hash rate slightly decreased, so for this GPU, it will not be beneficial to increase the core clocks. So let's go ahead and now decrease the core clocks to negative 200, and let's check this out. Now decreasing the core clocks, it looks like the hash rate was not affected, so let's keep decreasing it. Next I did negative 400 core, and it looks like there was no change in the hash rate. So let's decrease it to the max it will go, and that's negative 502 core. Now at negative 502 core, it looks like there was no change in the hash rates, so it's best to keep the core at negative 502, because that will lower the power consumption as well. So at 80% power limit, plus 820 memory, and at negative 502 core, I was getting around 30 mega hashes mining Ethereum. So now let's adjust the power limit for this GPU to decrease the power consumption without affecting the hash rates. Now you can first try increasing the power limit to see if your hash rates will increase. But for this GPU, increasing the power limit will have no effect on the hash rate. So let's decrease it. So for the power limit, I like to adjust the power limits by 10% until my hash rates drop. Then I would adjust the power limits by 5% to fine tune it. And then adjust the power limit by 1% to fine tune it even more. So from 80% to 70% power limit, it looks like the hash rate was not affected. So let's decrease it even more. Now at 65% power limit, my hash rate did decrease to 27 mega hashes from 30 mega hashes. So let's go ahead and now increase the power limit slightly to fine tune the card. So doing some fine tuning, the best power limit I set for this GTX 1660 Super was at 68%. So for the best efficiency setting, I put the power limit at 68%, the core clocks at negative 502, and the memory clocks at plus 820. And according to the miner program, I'm getting around 30 mega hashes and pulling around 83 to 86 watts due to the voltage adjusting up and down. But like I mentioned before, these overclock settings are great for this GPU only because I have other GPUs that are the same make and model, but they use slightly different overclocks. So let's check this out. Okay, so now let's do a little advanced overclocking and locking the voltage. So the power consumption stays consistent and your GPU will be a little more stable when mining. Now I do want to mention before you start locking the voltage, make sure you get the core clocks and memory clocks first running stable. And locking the voltage will affect the power draw. 
so the power limit slider will not take effect once you lock your voltage. Okay, so an MSI afterburner, in order to lock the voltage, you will see a symbol that is three bars right next to the word core clocks. And this is the voltage slash frequency curve editor. When you click on the symbol, you will have the options to lock the voltage for the GPU. Now checking out MSI afterburner, inside the circle on the right side, you can see the voltage reading alternating between 756 to 762 millivolts. But if you have multiple GPUs on MSI Afterburner, you may not be able to see the voltage reading and you will basically just need to guess what the voltage could be. But stay tuned for other videos, I'll test all the cars I own and I'll let you know. So let's first start with locking the voltage at 756 millivolts. So in order to do so, you will see these small gray squares on the voltage frequency curve editor. And on the bottom of the curve editor, you will see the voltage range. Find the gray square that is located at 756 millivolts, like so. Once you locate the gray square, click on the gray square and make sure you hit the L key on your keyboard to lock the voltage. You should see a yellow dotted line where you lock the voltage. Then make sure you go back to MSI Afterburner and click on the check mark to apply the changes. Now you should not see the voltage reading alternating around and it should be locked at 756 millivolts. And as you can see, I can adjust the power limit slider, but nothing takes effect because I locked the voltage. Now at 756 millivolts, I did slightly lose some hash rates. So I'm going to relock the voltage at 762 millivolts. So like before, click on the three bar symbol and find the gray square at 762 millivolts. Then click on the gray square and then push the L key on your keyboard. And you should see the yellow dotted line move to the new gray square. And then you can exit out, but make sure you click on the check mark to apply the new voltage change. So as you can see, my hash rates went back up to 30 mega hashes. So for the advanced overclocking, it does not matter what you set the power limit because we will be locking the voltage. The core clocks, I set it at negative 502. The memory clocks, I set it at plus 820. And then I did lock the voltage at 762 millivolts. So according to the minor program, I'm getting around 30 mega hashes and pulling around 86 watts. So let's check this out. Now, if you want to save your overclocks, first click on the lock symbol here if it's locked to unlock the save profile option, if not already unlocked. Once unlocked, click on the save button here and click on the profile number like so to save your overclocks you have already set. And there you have it, you just saved the overclock settings for the GPU. And all you have to do is click on the save profile number and click on the check mark to apply. And it will automatically set your overclocks you saved to your GPUs. And I also want to mention that when you close the minor program, the computer may crash because of your GPU's overclocks. But this may only happen with some GPUs. So what you can do to fix this is reset your overclocks by clicking here and then go ahead and close the minor program and your computer will not crash. Now one last thing I want to share is I did create this chart showing the best overclock settings and the safe overclock settings for every GPU mining Ethereum. Now it is silicon lottery and every GPU is different. So if you're having issues with the best OC settings, try using the safe OC settings first and then get it closer to the best OC settings to get it more efficient. But I highly recommend to fine tune each GPU individually using this guide. I will also be retesting each GPU down the road. So this chart will be updated in the future. So stay tuned. And if you did want to grab this chart, what you want to do is join the Discord. Now, once you join the Discord, you do have to do a quick capture verification. Once you do so, the full Discord will open up. Then what you want to do is scroll all the way down the Discord until you see this section called Helpful Info and Links. Once you're here, it will be in this section called Weekly Mining Profits Excel, and it will be this file called Weekly GPU Profits. Once you open the Excel, on the bottom, you'll see a couple tabs and it will be this tab called GPU Overclocks if you want to check them out. Alright, so thanks for checking out my guide on how to overclock your NVIDIA GPUs for GPU mining. And if you have any AMD GPUs, check out my guide on how to overclock AMD GPUs for GPU mining. And also check out my other videos on overclocks and power draw for all the GPUs I own. 
And just be aware that every GPU is different, it's silicon lottery. So I recommend it not to just copy any overclocks directly, but use it more as a reference. And if you have any questions and you want to ask me live, I do stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the life of minor every Sunday, 4.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. And if you do need any type of help, definitely join the Discord. I or someone knowledgeable will definitely help you out. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you enjoyed it, sub if you decided to see what's next. But of course, thanks for watching and always happy mining. Thanks for watching the life of a miner. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You don't want me to get angry and turn Super Saiyan, so make sure you subscribe to the life of a miner. I'm also the narrator. Next time on the life of a miner.